Right, welcome back to part two of our Fujimi 124 McLaren F1. So picking up where we left off last time, we're going to clean up all the rest of the parts in the kit. Now, as I said, it is quite a simple kit. Um, so it's going to clean everything up with some UMP thinny stick sponges and buffers. Quite easy, really. Sadly, this is where it starts to become apparent just how simplistic this kit is. The engine bay is dire. It looks nothing like the proper one. Um, that is a beautiful BMW V12 in there. Um, it should have gold foil lined um, insulation and what have you, and it just looks terrible. Everything looks awful in there. Um, I think a three somebody with 3D printing some skill could design a nice new interior for it and engine bay, and I think it would look fantastic then. For me, this is the realisation of, oh, God, this is going to look awful. So I have kind of opted to not detail paint the engine. I'm going to spray it black. And I'm going to leave it alone. For what you can see for the rear screen, which is very, very little, uh, I'm not going to waste my time building such a simplistic kit. And with this and the other kit we've built recently, let me think where it was. We built another one that was very simple. Um, I don't want to build simple kits anymore. Um, th this is pretty poor representation of this fantastic car. <clears throat> so I don't want to carry on doing this. So going forward, we're going to pick kids, kits with good uh, detail. That's how we're going to go. On this, though, we do have those lovely exhausts that come with a kit. Um, so we're cutting off the plastic ones, and we'll replace those with those turned aluminium. Um, so there is some detail being added. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. It sounds like a cop-out. It really does. Um, we had the Mercedes uh, 190. <laughs> Uh, from Kitbox, which is a similar kind of kit, just really not a great kit at all. And uh, I don't want to build these terrible kits. I've built hundreds of car models now. Um, <clears throat> I want to build something that's a little bit of a challenge, without being as challenged as Model Factory Hero, really. But I still want to build something that you know I can really get my teeth into. And other than the photo etch on this kit, there's nothing to it at all. It's very, very disappointing. And sadly, it is the only McLaren F1 kit of the road car really out there um so it's a real shame to be honest but it is what it is so i kind of decided to cut my losses and we'll just have this as a shelf looking model rather than a detailed uh representation i'm just hoping at some point in the future one of the manufacturers picks this up and reproduces it in the way it should be done um so like i said i hope you don't think it's a bit of a cop-out but it's just sometimes you've got to know when to leave things be. And for me, I'm not going to sit there for hours detail painting an engine that, <clears throat> in all bluntness, is going to look crap. Uh, and I'll never be happy with it. So, for what little we can see through the rear window, I'm just going to paint it black and we'll leave it be. The interior is pretty much the same as well. We're just going to paint that in black leather and just put everything in that we've got with the kit uh, and just leave it be. Um, this is just going to be an external looking model that's how i'm going to do it so it may seem a bit of a cop out i agree but it's one of those things uh, like i say going forward we're going to build kits like the t50 the gordon Moore automotive the mclaren senna which have got great detail to them um, let's ditch these poor representations of iconic cars now thankfully the pe set does add a bit of detail we've got the rear grill here uh, which is built up of several pieces of photo etch which have all got to be carefully aligned and connected together with some ca glue so put your optivisor on here and uh yeah nice and careful bob smith super glue saves the day here because you can still move things around and manipulate them but you need a steady hand good pair of tweezers so we're going to build up the frame first this is the main frame and then with the actual grill part it has indentations in it for the frame so we're going to offer that up and glue that in place. And that way we've got some rigidity for support in the frame. And we can add the other components from the outside. So if you've got this kit, um, study the instructions and you'll see how this goes together. <coughs> All the parts of this that slot in are on the back. So you have to assemble this first before you attach it to the actual grill itself. And then the front section slot in from the top. So once this is together, you can assemble the front um, from the for forward facing part if that makes sense hopefully it does so like i say we just carefully align it all we've got some bob smith gold on there which is a very slow curing ca glue um, and we're just going to carefully align it all and hold it there until the glue gets on purchase now 
I'm trying to avoid using Kicker at the minute, CA Kicker. It's not agreeing with me at all. It's giving me terrible headaches. So I am kind of letting this dry naturally at the minute until I can find an odorless uh, version. So, yeah, we've put a few dabs of Bob Smith's in strategic places. We can remove any excess later with some acetone. So it's not the end of the world. But like I say, I've lined it all up with the locator marks. Let the actual frame dry. <clears throat> and then with some glue on the outer side, we can put the grill in place. Push it home. Sorry for my head being in shot. And just hold it and let the glue grab it. Once we've done that, we can flip it back over. This is the other side. And these panels slot into slots on the front now. So we can assemble it properly this way. So I've already test fitted these parts. They all fit in perfect. A couple of dabs of Bob Smith's in strategic places. And a nice steady hand. We can start assembling all this. There's three pieces on the front. And it's well worth building this compared to the plastic part. It is leaps and bounds apart from it. Just so much nicer. And this is the kind of detail the kit deserves. So from the exterior, the kit's going to look okay. There we go. There's our grill built up. All our other photo etches on the uh, double-sided tape ready to go as well. And then we've got our window wipers, especially for Philip, who has a fetish for window wipers, I think. Uh, we literally cut the plastic window wiper off the arm in the kit. Assemble a couple of pieces of photo etch together like so. Then the blade and attach it all together. Fiddly, but not too bad to do. We can hold it together. Excuse my fingernails. I always have fingernails that are dirty lately. Just I do so much stuff with mixing paint. Just everything. I, my hands just get absolutely destroyed through the day. And I end up cleaning them several times a day. <laughs> So apologies for the dirty fingernails on camera. It's not that I'm unwashed. It's just that I'm busy. That is all. So tricky parts to get together. There we go. We're just following the instructions. Little dabs of Bob Smith are a lifesaver on these parts. Because not only is it thin. So the capillary action works a little bit with it. Um, but it doesn't dry white either. So it doesn't ruin the parts at all. There we go. Once we've got that together. We can grab our plastic arm, look at the instructions, make sure we get everything the right way. A little dab of glue, a yabba dabba do, and we can put it in situ the way the instructions call for. And it is a better looking blade than the plastic one. So again, it's worth doing. It's actually a really nice detail upset. I don't know if it comes with the kit or it's an extra part. Uh, mine's got a separate price tag on, so it must be a separate add-on. Uh, but if you do have this kit, I think it's well worth getting. Kit wheels, we're going to strip these in some chrome. I've already put a test piece in to make sure the big bad Dom Domestos does work. And it did. Literally stripped it in seconds. So pour it in everywhere. Get it covered. This is an old Johnson's cotton bud lid, which you don't get anymore. Which is really annoying. And right before your eyes, the chrome will vanish. And there we go. All the chrome gone. We've got nice black wheels now, so they'll be primed up and resprayed in a new colour today. Uh, one of my new metallics from my slightly different range of paints for Pro Scale. Uh, we've got a super fine silver we're going to be using today. So rinse them off under a tap, get all the bleach off, and then using a cotton bud, get in and around all the wheel and get rid of any water or bleach that may be left behind. And then give everything a nice clean wipe over to make sure there's no contaminants left behind. Uh, we want this nice and dry and clear of anything so that when we prime it we get no issues. So yeah, nice wheels on this. Back in the mid-90s, large wheels kind of weren't a thing. So I reckon these are what, about 16 inch, 17 at a push. Um, so yeah. Um, Priming up the uh, flat chassis now as well. We've got some Pro Scale Paints Black Primer. We're just dusting it off to begin with. Same with the interior. Give everything a couple of coats of primer. The interior is not bad. It's not bad. Just after the engine debacle, I thought, what's the point? I'll be honest. I'll be completely honest. I thought, what is the point in mucking around? Let's just get this done off the bench. And we hope and pray that somebody will release a kit in the future that really represents this car properly. 
So everything's getting primed up in a combination of ProScale, Black Primer, and Mr. Surfacer 1500. Um, all the smaller parts are basically Mr. Surfacer. All the larger parts, like the chassis and what have you, the interior, were ProScale. No real reason for doing that. It was just what was at hand. We've etched primed all the PE, and then give it all a couple of coats of LP5 semi-gloss black as well. So ProScale paint to etch primer, and then LP5 from Tamiya. And then we're going with jet black leather from Pro Scale for the interior. So a couple of coats of that on it all inside. And that's it. Other than decals and a bit of the trim that we had, we're not going to do anything else on the interior. I just made my mind up. It's just not worth it. And yes, I'll take the criticism of it being a cop out. It was my decision. It's just right. This, this is going to be a poor representation. Let's get it done and uh, get it off the bench. So a couple of coats of the jet black leather laid down absolutely beautiful. The iconic central seat, which looks a bit narrow to me at the top. We primed our wheels. Um, have we hang on? Yes, we have primed our wheels in Mr. Service of 1500 Black. And we've got my brand new paint, Pro Scale Super Fine Silver. So this is a different range of metallics that I've picked up now for Pro Scale. Um, and this will develop into a whole range of different metallic shades as we go. Um, this one came with a swatch of colours, so I can physically look at what they'll look like. Um, super finely pigmented, absolutely beautiful colour. Uh, looking at the swatches compared to the real McLaren wheels I could see online, this was the closest shade um, I could see. So we have, I think there's 27 variant shades of metallic colours. And yeah, absolutely beautiful. Those wheels look absolutely great. While we're there, we're going to spray the calipers in titanium gold from Pro Scale as well. A couple of light coats of that as well. This is my Iwata HPC Plus 18 PSI. It's a 0.3 mil needle. And then we'll do our exhaust in the titanium as well. Couldn't find a real reference for the exhaust color anywhere. So I just used a bit of interpretation and just did it in titanium gold. Rear calipers, front calipers sprayed exactly the same. The discs were spraying in Pro Scale Steel. We have photo etch to go on those, but we're going to spray up so you can see them through the sides. Tamir Optivisor on, where we use some AK Gum Metal water based paint for the center locks. Nice Winsor Newton brush here to get some nice detail painting in place. So nice steady hand here. The Optivisor, I think I've got two times magnification on mine. The Tammy ones are fantastic. Sadly, you can't get them anymore. Um, proper optical quality lenses, very comfortable to wear. Um, it's just a real shame Tammy has stopped making them. Again, we're using a water-based paint on a lacquer. So if we get any excess, we just grab a cotton bud and just wipe it off. And there we go. We'll do that to all four wheels. It's a small thing, but makes a bit of difference in depth to it. There's also a decal for the wheel cap center as well which will pop on later. We're not going to clear coat the wheels um, because I was quite happy with the silver tone of the wheels as they are. And then for the center of the discs, we've got our trusty artist circle template again. And we're going to spray the center. I forget the color now. I think it's gunmetal. I think I went with gunmetal for the center. I've forgotten them. I'm not going to lie. I'm hoping I can see the bottle on the bench in a minute. I'm hoping it's behind. I can see it through the hole. Ah, oh, that's thinner. Damn it. I'm going to say that's Pro Scale Gun Metal. That's what it looks like to me. Um, obviously, like I say, I uh, built so much lately, it all becomes like a haze as to what colour I've used. I always have them on the bench, so you can normally see them, but this time I've obviously forgotten. So, yeah, doing the central hub. I'm pretty sure that's Pro Scale Gun Metal. So our PE discs now, we're going to cut them off, clean them up, and get them glued in place. They are cross drilled as well. Uh, being the age of the car, it did have steel uh, discs on it. So cut them off with our Zoron PE shears. And then we're going to scuff the surface of them in circular motions on one of our Tamiya sanding pads just to add a little bit of whir to them, make them look a little bit more realistic. There we go. Much better. 
and then double checking which one goes where. Yep, definitely at that one. Some Bob Smiths again with one of our precision nozzles. And then grab our PE, pop it in place, and let the glue do its job. There we go, same on all the others. There we go, much better looking than the painted ones. Just because there's no real surface detail on the discs. The hubs, now not a fan of these, the way they went together. There's like this little central spline that goes through and this like locking point on the back. Very odd. Really weird, bit awkward to put together. And the caliper has like a outer caliper shell. Yeah, a bit of an odd one this. So I just glued it together as per the instructions. But yeah, yeah, a bit of an odd setup this one. But at least the calipers were separate for the most part which always makes painting a bit easier. And then obviously on the rear caliper and disc assembly, we've got the handbrake caliper separately as well. So dab a glue on there, pop it in place. And then our interior, we're just gonna put some Bob Smiths on the locator points. So they don't look at the interior or the engine bank. They're just structural parts at the moment. There's not many kits I've done this to over the years where I've just not bothered with the interior at all, which shows you how disappointed I am with this kit. Um, so it's just one of those, unfortunately. And then the same locating points on the back of the uh, interior, or the back of the chassis. We can pop those in. So the rear wheels have got a metal bar going through. So they're all in, just polycapped in place. Front ones just slide onto those hubs we built up earlier. Again, the poly caps hold them in place. And like I say, a big criticism of this is those rear tyres. The profile of them is way too high. Um, the original car didn't have lowest profile tyres, but they were lower than this. These are like tractor tyres. They do, they do look pretty terrible, to be fair. Now, we're going to polish up the body. So some water. Our 3M tries are 6 and 8,000 pads. A little bit of washing up liquid, just to get some lubrication. A little bit in the water. You don't need a lot at all. We've got our UMP polish system there as well. Some clean, cut-off pieces of T-shirt. And we're going to go around with the 6,000 and the 8,000. Not really using the 3,000 anymore. With the ProScale 2K, we've adapted the thinner. I'm finding we really don't need to take it back as far. The 6 and the 8 are more than adequate now. Um, so it just shows you how well that is working with the thinner ratios. To be honest, other than a few specks of dust, I probably could have left this. Um... But I think it does pay to sand any 2K back and polish it because it just makes it look better, in my opinion. So we're going to go around the whole car with the six and 8,000 trizip pads. Keep them uh, wet so we get lubrication. And obviously, we've added the washing up liquid, so we get added lubrication in there. Dry bits off as we go. There's a little bit of dust on that wing, so I'm just going to dry it off and see how we look. And then we'll crack on with the rest all over the body until we get a nice, flat, even surface. And then we can come in with the ultimate polish system. Starting off with the compound, which is a very aggressive, well, not a very, but a more aggressive um, type of polish. And what this will do is gradually remove all the imperfections from the sanding process. Uh, when we lead up to the polish, that will get it finally polished up to a nice high shine. So just concentrating on that wing for now, and then we'll move on to the rest of the car. Like I say, just systematically go around, watch all the edges and any raised detail with both the 3M pads and the uh, polish, because it's very easy to burn through. And just systematically around the whole body, flatten it back, polishing it all up as you go. Now, the UMP polish system is fantastic. I developed this. Um, it does work very well. Again, very forgiving, not too abrasive, but you can see the shine we're getting there on that body. It looks absolutely phenomenal. The biggest downside to our 2K is because it's a lot thinner and doesn't need as many coats. It doesn't fill the panel lines like a lot of other 2Ks do. So you do end up getting uh, polish stuck in all the panel lines. So an old toothbrush here is handy. And if need, give it a jet wash with some water in your airbrush. So yeah, this is the only downside to our 2K is it does collect in the panel lines because it doesn't fill the panel lines. So like I say, the old toothbrush is a very handy tool to have on the bench. 
And then we'll give her a final polish up. The windows, we've got the pre-cut mask that came with the detail upset. So these are laser cut. A little bit tricky to get in place on these doors because there's a very fine line in the windows. So just keep it equidistant and you'll be just fine. And then once you're happy, burst it down with a cotton bud. There we go. So you get masks for the front, rear, sides, uh, the doors, and the headlights as well, which is a nice touch. So we can spray the surround on this properly. Just make sure it's all set in place. And when you're happy, we've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black. Um, no, I haven't. I've used Pro Scale. This is Pro Scale black primer. My bad. Uh, we're going to water HPC plus again at about 18 psi and we're going to put a couple of coats of it down uh, We're not hosing it on. We don't want to bleed through the masking tape. So just light coats building it up Let it dry for a minute Go around do all the other parts and then come back and put a second coat down It doesn't need a lot. All you got to do is turn it around look at the other side and make sure that the coverage is even and that the screens look black So just take your time Mount everything appropriately so you don't get any overspray on the other side. Like I say, easily done. Once it's all dry, we can peel off the tape with some tweezers carefully. If you need to, get a knife edge under the edge just to lift it up. Just be very careful you don't A, scratch the glass or your paintwork. And then just keep working at it until it picks up. And again, be careful of masking. You don't put too much stress on the plastic and break it. There we go. Nicely crisply masked everywhere. Yeah, very good quality mask in the kit. And as I said, when we first opened the boxes at the beginning of the videos, the, the glass is actually pretty good quality on this. I think the rear engine cover is not the best, which is good for us in a way because we've not got a lot to look at. Um, but those masks are a welcome addition, as are all these photo etch grills as well. So this one's been rolled into shape just to give her a bit of a curve. There's locating points on there so a little dab of glue on those same on the doors as well for these door vents uh, just get a little bit of bob smiths on there and push them home there we go and now we can start popping some more of the p in so we've got this grill on the rear engine cover which goes in place like so. We're going to glue this from the inside. It's not got the widest gluing platform underneath. I don't want to squeeze out on the top. So I thought if I glue it underneath, it'll uh, capillary reaction under the photo etch and do the job that way. And then we're going to glue the rear lights in. Now, I accidentally glue the light lenses on to the rear lights without a thinking to paint them red and yellow. Or orange and to paint the reflectors so thankfully as I was gluing them in I realized my mistake and took them back off and painted the reflectors but what I did notice was I actually liked the look of these clear and I thought well it's not a homage to the proper car is it because it's never going to be what I want I thought you know what? let's give it a bit of a different look so I didn't I purposely didn't paint the rear lights in the red and orange that they should be I left them clear. And as James Cube Jam says, it really modernizes the car. It really does change the look of the car. I did the same to the front ones as well. Um, I could easily paint them. It took me five minutes to paint them, but I accidentally put them together without thinking and then realized, took it apart, painted the reflector and thought, you know what? I actually quite like it with the, uh, the clear lights. We've got the photo etch number plate now. Doing our trick with the sander. I've just taken the upper surface off the centers and the edges. I really like this look on number plates, and I wish a lot more cars came with photo etch plates like this. It's a simple trick of just making an interesting focal point on the car. So just going round. There we go. Then we can glue that in place. A couple of dabs of Bob Smith's. There we go, there's our number plate in place. And then we go with our windscreen. So really nice locating points for the glass. It, it's one good point of this kit. We've got the rear one in already, you can see that. 
So quite a generous uh, mounting point on them. They've got holes built in to locate them. So just be careful, very careful, don't drop it like that. Uh, get the locating points lined up with a little dab of glue on the top. Press it home and just hold it, let the glue grab it, and job done. Really impressive mounting points for the glass. It, it's such a weird kit, this one. It's so impressive in some places and really dire in others. Side windows glued in place as well. This is where Bob Smith's gold is your friend because it doesn't fog glass. Works really well. Dries pretty quick. Quicker than white glue. Um, so not bad at all. We've got our front headlights in. We've built the assembly up. We've got the glass that we masked up earlier. Little dab of Bob Smith's. These fit in place absolutely perfect. So this has been a point of contention in the past with Fujimi kits. The headlights often don't fit. These fitted like a glove, literally like a glove. Very nice. And then we're going to mount the chassis to the body. So it just clips on. It's a little bit tricky to get in place. There's a little locating point in the back. Get the wheels in. Get the edge of the chassis over the uh, the body, or the body over the chassis rather. And then we can push the front in. And it all just clips in place. Quite positively actually. Goes together quite well. There we go, a little bit of persuasion from our tweezers just to open the edges out. Just this final one just clicks over the top and then into the front there we go job done we've minted the chassis to the body now the doors we've got the windows to go on the side you can see them up above and then the door card so again there's two little locating lugs get the appropriate glass now i don't glue the glass to the top of the door i've left that because i want the glass the door to fit the frame properly so we're just going to glue the bottom in and then glue our door card in on top. So some Bob Smiths again. Place our door card in place. Make sure you get your locator points connected properly. We need a little bit more glue. There we go. Drop it several times. Line roll up, push it, push it home. Obviously, at this stage in the game, don't be getting Sega all over your fingers and all over the model. Take your time. So the doors fit very snugly. Sadly, you can only either have it open or closed. I don't think you can do both because there's, there's a bracket that fits on the door to hold it open. Uh, you can see the sink mark on the top of the door now, which is disappointing as well. So all I've done is put a couple of dabs of Bob Smith's where the door cards fit. And like I say, the doors do fit very tightly. So a little bit of a click in place and they hold. So you get away without glue on the bottom piece probably. But where the top is a bit sprung, you can see it there. If you watch, I move it. Yeah, we need to put a little dab of glue in there. So we're going to hold the door on. Lift this up like an octopus. And then put some Bob Smiths just on the inner parts like so. Very carefully. And then just going to hold the door and then push the top down. Hold it, do the same for both sides until it dries. And there we go. There's our doors in place. We've got these little annoying panels on the side. That go in place. Make sure you get the correct one on the right side. There we go. Our fuel filler cap. Little dab of glue on there and the PE in place. And then our window wiper in place as well. And then finally the badges. So there's a PE badge for the back, which has a decal over the top, and there's the decal for the front bonnet as well. Our exhaust are in place. And there we go. We're done. A disappointing kit, 
I'm not going to lie, very, very disappointing from Fujimi. Uh, the biggest letdown is the engine bay, lack of detail, and those rear tyres are monstrously too big. They're just too high a profile. Um, it does kind of ruin the look of the car. Other than that, the car looks good. The, the kit was okay. It was a bit basic. The shape looks spot on for the McLaren F1. Uh, the colour is fantastic. Once you see it on the black background in a second, the colour looks great. It's just really let down by some disappointing points. But it's built now. It's done. I'm hoping somebody will bring one out at a later date. and I can do justice to this car. It is one of my favourite cars, this. So it was a disappointing kit to build, but hey, it's just one of those. So it's primed in pro scale black primer, painted in pro scale McLaren magnesium silver, clear coated in pro scale 2K clear. The wheels are pro scale super fine silver. The interior is jet black from pro scale. Um, we have the P detail set on the car as well. Um, we polished it back with the Trizic pads and polished up with the UMP polish system. Um, and that's it. It's a very, very basic kit. Like I say, very disappointing. Um, but it still looks like a McLaren F1. Uh, it's just got a few silly problems with it. You know, at a later date, somebody might bring something out for this. You never know. I can take this back apart, no problem. But for now, that's where we're leaving this. So we'll go back to me for some final thoughts. Okay, and there we go. All done. All done and dusted. At the end of the day, from a distance, it looks like a McLaren F1. It looks fine. Um, it'll sit in my display case and if or until another company produces a road car of it um, until then it's just tough at the end of the day not a great kit, very very disappointing engine, it doesn't even remotely look like the real thing at all very poorly moulded um, and as you can see yeah it was kind of a cop out, I just kind of not gave up on the kit but thought what is the point in spending hours in detail and stuff and that I'll never be happy with um, that you can barely see as well at the end of the day. So, yeah, it is what it is. This and that Mercedes 190 we built a while back have been very, very disappointing kits. Probably the two most disappointing kits this year. And I think I said it last week. Was it last week's bench update? Or I said I'm not going to build rubbish kits anymore. Or was it the live stream? I forget now. Anyway, um... Yeah, I don't want to build these kits anymore. If they've got crappy molded in engines or whatever, then I just don't want to know them at all. So, yeah, very disappointing. Uh, across the board with a few things. Interior wasn't great. The engine bay was terrible. Those tyres in the back were way too big. It's, it's just one of those. Just one of those. But it's the only game in town. It's the only kit available of this car. So we built it. It looks good. It looks all right in the pictures. Um, the Pro Scale paints performing just great as usual. The detail upset did add a nice bit of detail to it. It's just disappointing with a kit you've looked forward to for quite some time. Turns out to be a bit crap. Anyway, we're going to rectify that next with a brand new tool Tamiya kit of the Epic T50. So that will be the next build. You'll probably see the Viper build first because that's still underway. Uh, but that's the next build I'm going to actually physically start probably after the weekend. Um, and that's it. There we are. Another build off the bench. Um, that is the eighth video I've edited and voiceovered this week alone. It's all I've done all week is videos. Um, so there's loads coming up for you. Um, and that's it. Uh, thanks for watching today as always. Um, thank you for your continued support. You're all absolute legends. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday and I'll see you tomorrow. You won't see this though, because it's the 27th of October. I'll see you on the 28th of October for Saturday's bench update. Yes, because you won't see this for at least a week. Uh, so, there we go. Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.